1988, the Association for Psychological Science, or APS, was founded to advance psychology as a science and to expand the field's reach to other scientific disciplines. The organization created five foci that would be used as guides to help fulfill their mission for scientific advancement. To advocate for psychology as a science, to enhance psychology as a coherent science, to protect scientific values in education, to use science for the public's interests, to create diverse opportunities for the discussion of scientific issues. During the 1980s, there was great interest around researching the mental and physical experiences of the people. This interest led the APS, the National Institution of Neurological Disorders and Stroke, and the National Institute of Mental Health to submit a series of reports to Congress and the President on the current state of neurological and mental health research. They requested more financial and political support for their research endeavors, and their persistent efforts eventually led President George W. Bush Sr. to sign a declaration on July 25, 1989, designating the 1990s as the Decade of the Brain. This designation identified a national research endeavor that focused on neuroscientific objectives pertinent to mental health issues and brain processes. The decade was now time to better understand unknown questions such as, How do the brain and nervous system function? How do they fail to function? And how are they organized? Now let's see what advancements were made during the decade of the brain. In 1990, major depression rivaled hypertension as the most frequent illness seen in health settings. It was also seen as a precursor of suicide and was associated with mortality rates from cardiovascular disease. These health concerns led Drevitz et al. to conduct one of the first anatomical studies of unipolar depression. The researchers wanted to understand the neurological basis for major depression and decided to use a PET scan to answer the following questions. What are the state-related differences or the blood flow changes present only when depression symptoms are active? And what are the trait-related differences or the blood flow changes present when depression symptoms are active, when depression symptoms are currently inactive in people with a history of depression, and when people have no current or past experiences with depression? There was an increased change in blood flow in the prefrontal cortex of currently depressed people, which was not seen in non-depressed people and people in remitted depression. This showed the prefrontal cortex is a brain area only affected when depression symptoms are present. There was also an increased change in blood flow in the left amygdala for both depressed people and people with remitted depression, which means the amygdala is at play when depression symptoms are both active and inactive. There were other brain areas and structures that experienced increased changes in blood flow in depressed people's brains, such as the left medial thalamus and the right hippocampal formation. Overall, Drevet et al.'s introductory research on the brain structures associated with depression helped steer mental health researchers into studying the prefrontal cortex and the amygdala. Influenced by the national research agenda to understand the brain and related processes, Jack Pankseff wanted to understand the neurobiological roots of behavior and emotion. Pensek thought, What topic is understudied in psychology and can be relatable to the general public? I'll study the chills! What kind of chills are you referring to, old wise one? I will answer this question through a quick experiment. I just died on your arms tonight. Did you feel anything? Well, essentially, Hanks up was interested in the chills induced by music. Let's look at how he researched this phenomenon. Close your eyes and enjoy. It's hot in here, it's so hot. So take off Doyle. Look at this. They reported having more chills to the sad song. Didn't they originally say in the pre-study questionnaire that they thought happy music would give them more chills? You know humans have zero insight into predicting their behaviors, Doodle. Back to the lab! Now let's play happy and sad music people are both familiar and unfamiliar with. Looks like females had more chills than men, and overall, the sadder the song, the more chills reported by both men and women. This was especially true for unfamiliar songs. How do we make sense of this data, O oh wise one? Why does sad music evoke the most chills, yet people describe this experience as positive? Well, Doidal, this is a superficial paradox. There can be no happiness without sadness, nor can sadness exist without happiness. As neurological evidence indicates, the basic output circuitries of grief and joy are intertwined in the human brain. 
This explains why people experience joy after hearing a melancholic song. These emotions were designed to elaborate the mandate of social bonds. Also, the internal feeling of coldness, or chills, may provide an organism with increased motivation for social reunion. Basically, the chills the subjects reported after said songs resonates with ancient emotional circuits that establish internal values related to social contact. What's going on in the brain to produce the chills? From my past work with animals, I predict that brain oxytocin, prolactin, and opioid systems are major players in the production of the chills. These circuits are important in controlling separation distress. Where in the brain does this happen? Probably the inferior colliculus and medial geniculate body, which are filled with opiate receptors. Such brain zones are close to separation distress circuits. You're brilliant! Oh, doidle! I know. In addition to the clinical, medical, and psychological benefits discovered during the Decade of the Brain, the Decade created a nationwide forum to publicize the importance of brain research. Programs such as Brain Awareness Week and other advocacy groups on individual disease also became visible during the time. It's getting hot in here.